Part four of depth first search, recursive backtracking, maze generation algorithm. This is the last part, the final part. By the end of this particular video, I will have, we will have finished this exact simulation and be drawing a full maze and hopefully you will come up with some creative ideas and things you could do with it. So where are we so far? So this is what we've got so far. If I hit refresh, you can see we have this cell that's marching from marching around the grid, removing walls, and eventually it gets stuck because there's no cell that it hasn't visited already around it. This is where backtracking comes in. While it's marching around, it needs to keep track of where it's been previously. So when it gets stuck, it could go back to a spot that still had available places for it to go. This is the backtracking aspect. So, uh, so yeah, so there's a lot of pieces to this. And uh, first, uh, and, and so let's look at the algorithm and actually see what it says. So <clears throat> look at this. We, let's, what have we done so far? So choose randomly one of the unvisited neighbors. If I go to the code and if I go to the part where we are, I've done that. This is me choosing randomly one of the unvisited neighbors. Now, push the current cell to the stack. This is where I'm implementing this video. Remove the wall between the current cell and the chosen cell. I've done that. Make the chosen cell the current cell and mark it as visited. Done that. So actually all that we need to do is add this step number two and then this other case down here for what we're actually doing with the stack. And this is actually going to be quite easy. And uh, actually writing the code, I'm going to just only add like four lines of code to this program and suddenly it's going to be working. But before I can add those lines of code, what I would like to discuss to you is what is this thing called a stack? And what do I need it for? So a stack is a, <clears throat> I, 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 like I have a little like um, issue where it's like, like if I, I'm like allergic to the word computer science and if I say it, I get like a little bit congested. But stack is really kind of a term from computer science, so to speak. So what do I mean by that? So uh, if you're watching this video, you are probably familiar with the idea of an array, right? I'm sorry, I'm like, if I'm hungry, I'm tired, but I'm, I'm going through with this, right? This idea of an array is like a list of things, and each spot in the array has an index. This is a data structure. It keeps track of a bunch of things in a linear list, each with an index. A stack is another kind of data structure to keep track of information. And a stack is a data structure that acts very much like a stack of things, a stack of paper. You could imagine you in olden times, times of yore, when people had inboxes and outboxes that were actually physical things, you'd be sitting at your desk and someone would, people would keep coming in and adding things to your stack of paper. So things are getting pushed into the stack, added on top, on top, on top. Now, you then arrive to work and you see your stack of paper. What's the first item you're going to work on? The thing on the top, the last thing added to the stack. That is referred to as popping, so taking things out of the stack. This is sort of a strange idea. The last thing in is the first thing out. This is the polar opposite of this idea of a queue, right? If there is a, uh, <laughs> I'm about to draw a tickets booth, right? If there is a tickets booth with a ticket salesperson, I don't want to go too far with this, and then you could imagine a queue of people waiting in line to buy tickets. Queue, I probably spelled that wrong, but whatever. The, the first person in line, right, the, this, if you're pushing, if your people are lining up, kind of like pieces of paper piling up on a stack, is the first person to get tickets, right? You would never sell tickets to the last person in line. Um, but a stack, we're not using a queue in this particular prob project. We're using a stack. The idea of the last thing in is the first thing out. So how do you program a stack? Well, there's all sorts of different ways we could do it, but honestly, I'm just actually going to use a JavaScript array because the JavaScript array has a push function which adds things to it. And in fact, I'm pretty sure we'll find out when we write the code. It also has a pop function. And the pop function allows you to pop things off. So even though an array has all sorts of features like indexes and things can be added and deleted from the middle, we don't, we're not going to use any of that. We're just going to use an array to keep this stack of objects that we push in and pop stuff out. So hopefully that clears up for you if you haven't heard about a stack before what that is. And now let's look at number two here. Push the current cell to the stack. Let's add this to our code. So I'm going to go over here to the code. One thing I should mention is I moved the cell constructor function to a separate file, cell.js, just to keep things organized a little better. So when you go download the code, you'll see that. And um, I'm about to sneeze. We'll see what happens if I make it through the rest of this video. Ah, so now I want to create a stack. So I'm just going to make it an array and make a global variable called stack. And I'm going to set it to be an empty array. If I look at the algorithm again, 
Item two, push the current cell to the stack. Let's go back to the code. And where do I do that? Step two is right here. It's not there, I'm gonna add it. Step two, and I'm gonna say stack dot stock, stack, ha, stack dot push, ha, current. So there we go, there's very little code to write here. Push the current cell to the stack, I have done it. Now, let's figure out the next piece. So this here, we need to deal with. Now, remember, when do we suddenly need to make use of that stack? We're carving out this maze. We are, a, we, are, we are like a digger thing going underneath the earth and carving a tunnel. And at a certain point, we get stuck. We have to backtrack and find a spot that we kept track of in our stack to try going a different direction. So we want to go and use the stack when we get stuck. When do we get stuck? We get stuck if there are no available neighbors. Remember this check neighbors function returns undefined if it has no neighbors that it can give back to you. So if next is not undefined, do all that normal stuff. Otherwise, now we're stuck. Let's go and make use of the stack. So what's the first thing that we do? Oh, but it says else if stack is not empty, right? We can only use the stack if it's not empty. So here I should say else if stack.length is greater than zero. It's an array, so we can check the length is greater than zero. That's how we know if it's not empty. What? Pop a cell from the stack. Var cell equals stack.pop. This is when we find out if uh, JavaScript arrays have a pop function. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I know that they do. I'm being facetious here because I recorded this video earlier, but the sound didn't work and now I'm redoing it. You don't need to know that because you're watching this sometime in the future when robots have overtaken you anyway and you're a robot watching this. Hopefully not. Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> ah, pop a cell from the stack and make it the current. Someone in YouTube, someone in the comments can complain that I'm off track, but I'm back on track. Pop a cell from the stack and make it the current cell. Uh, current equals cell, right? And you know what, what am I making these two lines of code for? All I wanna do is basically say, if we're stuck, go to the stack and we've got a new current spot. So there we go, and guess what? I'm pretty sure that we've now made this work because it's, notice how it's not getting stuck anymore because when it gets stuck, it goes back. Now it's happening so fast, it's sort of hard to see what's happening, but you can see that it's eventually, and the sound is still working, that it's going to revisit every single spot. Now. I'm not gonna add too much more to this. This is basically done and you can see eventually it's gonna find its way back to the beginning and it sort of solved the maze. And now it's a maze that you could actually work with and do other things with. I might, if I were you, trying to add some stuff to this, you know, as an exercise, you might try highlighting the cells a different color that are currently in the stack. You know, another thing I could do this really quickly, um, just uh, is I could set the frame rate again to something slower. And here now we might be able to see like, oh, we might be able to like pinpoint the moment it gets stuck and goes back I'm watching, it doesn't seem stuck yet. Doesn't seem, well, we're not getting, we're not getting lucky here. Uh, come on, get stuck, get stuck. Oh, there's a lot of room for it to go. Get stuck, get stuck, get stuck, get stuck. <laughs> Just my luck, okay. It probably, and I got stuck, and you can see how it's backtracking and going a different way. And now look, it's backtracking again, moving along that stack and finding a different way. Now it's backtracking again. So you can see, now you can see what it's doing. So you could sort of slow it down to watch this process. Um, you know, you might sort of see like, how does this work, uh, you know, with a much lower resolution and like a, I mean, this is kind of crazy what I'm about to do. It's probably gonna run really slow. So this is, this is a drawing problem. Like, you, you know, I could sort of generate this whole like super high resolution maze. I mean, you really can, you know, I might move to processing for this and I could render out a PDF of the maze and I could have a website where people just log on and get infinitely generated mazes sent to them. What kind of creative things could you do with this in terms of color and application and that sort of thing? So I hope you will continue to explore that. Uh, send me your questions in the comments, share with me things you make from this. But this I think really concludes, I just wanna make this work <laughs> in a very simple way. This really concludes um, the uh, tutorial on how to do the <sighs> depth first search Recursive backtracker, we know what a stack is and all that kind of stuff, um, algorithm for maze generation. I will mention that if you look at this Wikipedia page, there are many other algorithms for generating mazes. And if you look through it and have some interest and implement one of these, share it with me or write in the comments that you would really love a particular video doing a different algorithm. Uh, try it in 3D, make your maze happen in Minecraft. I don't know, whatever you can think of, please do and let me know how it goes for you. And I will see you in some other video 
in the future when I am hopefully not a robot. Goodbye.